All right. All right. Thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, congratulations on a great me. talk earlier. Thank you. And so we have it for everyone tuning in at home. Who are you and what do you do? My name is Ronnie Kohavi. Uh, I worked at a whole bunch of companies starting from uh, Silicon Graphics, startup here called Blue Martini, which IPO'd, uh, then went to Amazon, Microsoft, Airbnb, and now I'm consulting and teaching online. And uh, what universe of topics do you like to live in? Yeah, so uh, starting at Amazon, I had this epiphany, I would say. Uh, I ran the WebLab team, which is the experimentation platform at Amazon. And at some point, I'm like, can we do statistics on how many experiments actually are positive and statistically significant? And it was less than 50%. And that was surprising to me because we thought, you know, we are the best in the world at experimentation and the best in the world at personalization. That's the team I ran, the data mining and personalization. And we had this feeling that we are doing really well. But when you look at the numbers, they're very humbling. Lots of failures. Mm -hmm. uh, and so when I went to Microsoft, Kind of a funny story. I was brought in to do something else. My boss left. And then uh, my newer boss said, we don't know what to do with you. You're a partner. Why don't you pick something and do it? And so I picked uh, experimentation. Microsoft was not doing anything serious in experimentation. I think uh, at that point, uh, our telemetry, I was at Microsoft at the time, would have been Squim. Does that sound yeah, familiar? Yeah, Squim was the, was the office telemetry. Office. Uh, and totally home rolled, you know. And completely home rolled, exactly. But office was actually not the place to start experimentation. Uh, I think you were there at Microsoft. St Steven Sanofsky had this like 27 step process of how to release software in three years. And I was trying to convince group to be agile, run experiment, learn to fail fast. And when I share this statistic that you know, more than 50% of experiments at Amazon were failing, the classical response was, we have better PMs here. So very much in denial of the fact that this could happen at Microsoft. Uh, the reality was we built a platform over multiple years. Um, the failure rates were much higher about 85 to 70% of experiments failed to move the metrics. So success rates of 15 to 30%. Uh, the, at Bing, it was 50, about 15% because mm. it's a hard domain to optimize. This is where we scaled up experimentation, built it to the point where, just to give you an idea, we were launching somewhere around 50 new experiment treatments every day, every workday. So, Lots of, this isn't the, we release every three years. This is we release multiple times a day. Lots of experiments. Um, when I worked at Bing, Satya was my skip. He got the whole message. And then when he became CEO, it was let's spread this across more of the company. And he gave us the challenge of convincing Office to run experiments. And that was a cultural challenge that I talked about in my talk here. Uh, very hard, but it, the thing that helped was that um, Chi Lu, who was running Bing and then was given office, said, I want you guys to ship every month. And that forced a big cultural change yeah. uh, from this, you know, what I call the Sanofsky waterfall model into a much more agile mechanism of shipping, getting the feedback, measuring, learning, mm -hmm. and improving. Do you think there's something, so I recall this time at Microsoft, the Bing team was inherently good at experimentation because they ran a purely web-based product with no desktop legacy. Uh, and my question for you is, at that time, Office was also, you know, a lot of the usage was shifting to the web-based product. Do you think there's something inherently more um, that lends itself to experimentation more with a search engine than with productivity applications? I think it's not the product, rather it's what you mentioned as online. So an online product, much easier to modify. So Office Online absolutely was the place where it's a lot easier to experiment. 
That said, if you're building your desktop product or mobile app correctly, most of the logic is on the server side. So if you're building software correctly, the idea is for connected products especially, um, put as little as you can on the client, have it make service calls all the time to do whatever you need. And that's where, again, if you're on the server side, you can do experiments very easily. Even on the client, when we onboarded Office, and Office has you know, the desktop release shipping every month, hundreds of experiments were baked into each of that client release. So the release would go out, people would install it, and then we would start the experiment remotely. So when the client wakes up, it says, give me the assignment for all my 300 experiments. And you were able to start the experiment, get the telemetry, get the data in. And this is probably the most important reason that Office adopted experimentation. It wasn't for the innovation. I don't think they appreciated the, the whole idea of innovate faster. It was crashes. They were moving to a one year release, sorry, to a one month release cycle. I don't know if you remember those times. When I got to Microsoft 2005, the ratio of developers to testers at Office was one to one. Horrendous. Like I came from Amazon, it was 15 to one. Um, so all people would want to do is like, I'll write the basic code, throw it over the wall, they'll debug it for me, but I can say I'm code complete. Uh, when you move into a monthly cycle, and with especially Satya announcing that he does not want to have so many QA people and basically let go of that function, most of it, they went through a rough period where features were released that increased crashes. And I, I remember this sort of Rajesh Yah, who ran Office, talked to me and says, look, I never want to get this call from the CEO of Shell telling me you're in my organization because your product crashes. Sorry for my French. Uh, and so the main thing they wanted from us is the ability to do what's called safe deployments, to deploy that new client, but if there's any feature in it that is causing crashes, roll it back remotely. Mm. And remember, this is now what you can do. The client wakes up, goes to the server, and says, give me my assignments for experiments. If we know that an experiment is causing crash, and we just turn it off. That's it. So this is how we got into Office. This is how Office managed to deploy safely with you know, fast velocity. Mm. Um, and then everything was baked into their development and everything. Then they started to onboard to, yeah, we can actually see if the feature is useful. <laughs> and that's when they started to really experiment with ideas, which I think mm -hmm. is where innovation is really accelerated with feature experimentation. As you, you've worked at many organizations, not just Microsoft, as you right. said, uh, either at places you've worked with or other tech companies in Seattle or in the Valley, what are the couple that really stand out to you as like really leading the way on experimentation and taking an experiment, uh, a statistics and an experiment, experimental approach to product development? I actually think that most of the large companies, so let me separate this out. In the past, you had to build, right? So we built at Amazon, we built at Microsoft, even Airbnb built. Uh, Google built, Netflix built, everybody built. I think today there's enough offering, including the conference that we're in, which is one of the vendors of experimentation, that the decision is kind of harder. But for the big players, I think most of them got the statistics correct, and this is not easy, a lot of the early adopters of experimentation on the side did not get the statistics correctly. There's a famous case where, uh, I'll name them because now they're, they've fixed this, but Optimizely uh, in their first release, which was about a couple of years, I think, got the statistics all wrong. Mm. Like literally messed up the statistics so that they had a very high false positive rate. And you started to see these posts where people say, one of them that I remember is very famous, how optimized they almost got me fired. And this guy says, we have, we're reporting too many good results. And then he ran what's called an AA test. So normally you run an A and a B. He ran an A and an A, and he says, 40% of my AAs are statistically significant. <laughs> There's no change between the A and the A. Wow. Um, so I think that's an example of 
it's hard to trust the data sometimes. Um, in their book, the Optimize the Founders wrote a book, I remember pointing this out in the review on Amazon, which is still number one, because it says, nice book, but the stats is all wrong here. Um, <laughs> So I think going back to your question, I think most of the larger companies hired enough statistical experts to do it correctly. Uh, companies that are famous, Netflix ran experimentation very early on. Booking, yeah, yeah. amazingly famous for saying, we are data driven, we're gonna make decision based on data. And of course, you know, the Googles, the Amazon, you know, all the familiar ones that you think of uh, are doing it well. Final question. As you reflect back in your own career, what were the biggest aha moments where you feel like, oh, everything I do after this is different or better now because of something I've learned? So I mentioned this. I think the biggest aha moment in my career by far is that aggregation of data at Amazon to compute the success and failure rate. When that came back, we were surprised. In fact, I remember that like, this can't be right. Let's just double check the numbers here. Um, I think that was a major aha moment. There's a, a few more aha moments where we ran some experiment that nobody thought would be significant. Like, oh, let's do this because it's just a few hours of thing, but it not, it's going to give us a small benefit. And then seeing that the impact is 20 times larger than we expected. So I mentioned this, this is the opening example in, that I use in my class and in my book. A small change to the way ads were displayed on Bing. And you'll see when I show the A and the B, it's like, okay, well, why would we do this change? And it improved revenue by 12%. Wow. So this was over $100 million. Uh, and I think this example gave a lot of people that feeling of we cannot prioritize correctly, we have to experiment. Because this language, I look back by the way, this language in the backlog for six months. Just that delay was worth $60 million. <laughs> because we couldn't prioritize it. But once that experiment happened, and then you know, it was like, let's run it again just to make sure, I, mean, I think we ran like six times. Um, just to make sure, and you know, is it this or this or this? But that's what I think of as an experiment that like shifts the tanker. People were like going this way in the backlog, and now it's like, wait, these UI experiments? They're way more important than we thought. Mm. Uh, the same, by the way, same sort of epiphany happened on performance, which is, you know, Bing was running, we were doing okay, we were doing like one and a half seconds, just to give you a number, and the psychology literature says anything under three is you're fine. But there was a question, it's like Google's doing under a second. What, you know, should we invest in the performance? And more interestingly, the question came, well, how many people should we put on the performance team? Is it one, is it five, is it 20? And so we ran an experiment to assess the value of performance. And I'll, I'll give you the punchline. Every four milliseconds, four over 1,000 of a second, funds an engineer for a year. Okay? Whoa. And then, okay, we got to change the allocation. The performance team is not going to get 20 people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so those are the amazing moments. It was like first experimentation and then seeing these like surprising results that just change the way you think about the product direction and what should we invest in.